Well, thanks. Uh, thank you all for being here. It, uh, it's the last session, I believe, so probably getting tired already, but hopefully uh, uh, Mars robots can uh, can make keep you awake. Um, unfortunately, we won't, won't be sending robots into uh, into space today, but uh, there he will go to the cloud. So hopefully that's good enough for you. Um, a bit about me. My name is uh, Jeroen Resort. I work at uh, JDriven. It's a small uh, company in the Netherlands doing uh, mainly Java and front-end development for customers, consultancy basically. And uh, our customers do not do much serverless yet, unfortunately. But, um, well, the topic interests us and <coughs> we do a lot of things uh, in the evenings, spending some spare time together, uh, getting to know new technologies and learning new stuff. So, about this talk, um, I'll be showing a robot, how to build a little robot and how to control it with software. Um, or, uh, my original talk was about uh, 40 minutes long, but uh, Today it's a lightning talk, so I'll be skipping a lot of uh, code examples. If you're interested in them, please come over after the talk uh, or talk to me uh, when we are having drinks. And um, yeah, I can show you uh, and tell you more. Uh, after the robot, I'm uh, going to discuss the a Amazon IoT platform and uh, finish with a demo. The uh, the robot isn't exactly an, an IoT device, but it's uh, it has some similar similarities. Like it's um, uh, you have the same challenges like connectivity, computing power, and and uh, and, uh, and and power battery. So why do this talk? Um, I like robots. Well, I was thinking, why do I like robots? Um, I think it's because uh, I grew up with all those science fiction movies in the 80s and the 90s, and all my heroes were robots. Well, all of, almost all of them. <laughs> and um, besides robots, I like science fiction. So a robot, sending of a robot to Mars is kind of cool. But it isn't science fiction anymore. Almost 20 years ago, the first robot landed on Mars and started driving around, exploring the surface. Uh, the Pathfinder mission in uh, 1997, and uh, in the last few decades, two decades, there have been several more missions um, finding out, uh, trying to find out things about Mars. Um, so, if you want to build your own robot, uh, what should it do? A robot that you send to Mars, we want to we want to to explore, and uh, for that. Um, it needs to move around, take some pictures, and gather data. That's that's my mission. Okay, so how how to get there? What would that robot need? What kind of capabilities? Well, it needs a power supply. It uh, it will need connectivity. I'm cheating a bit. On Mars, there's no internet, <laughs> but <laughs> here, luckily, I just have Wi-Fi. So if it works, <laughs> my robot works too. Um, a camera for the pictures and some sensors for other kinds of data. So, if you want to build a robot, where to start? There are a lot of uh, different uh, robots in the marketplace. Uh, some expensive, some less ex less expensive. And there's one I'm kind of fond of. It was a Kickstarter project uh, one and a half year ago, and. I joined it and, and bought one too. It was called the Embot, and the Embot was uh, mainly pointed to be a, a, a robot for kids to learn technology. And it was funded within 24 hours, so it was uh, very successful. And a few months later, I got my own Embot. This is it. So the Embot is very easy to build. Um, my kids at the time, s five and uh, se uh, seven years old, they were able to construct it themselves with a small guide. Um, the core of the Embot is an Arduino board. It comes with uh, connectivity in the form of Bluetooth or 
a separate a dongle with uh, another communication. Uh, it has uh, infrared, all kinds of sensors, and uh, and two uh, motors to drive it around. And uh, you power it with batteries or uh, lithium. So one of the things I really like about the Mbot is you can program it with Scratch, making it very easy to non-technical peop people to get started and try out this robot. Uh, on that subject, uh, two weeks ago I was uh, helping organize a DevOps for Kids session in the Netherlands. So kids from ages 10 to 14 and uh, trying out, uh, learning to program and getting to know uh, programming and things like that. It was very successful. It was amazing how quickly these kids learn and, and try out their own stuff and, 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 and drive around with the robot and have, have fun. That was very cool. So um, this is the, the software that comes with the Mbot. It's a modified version of Scratch. It, uh, it calls, it's called Mblock. Uh, normally you only see the, the Scratch piece of, of code. And if you switch on the advanced mode, you'll see uh, the, the Arduino C code uh, at the side, so you, you, can, you can do either blocks or a code. You can also download an Arduino SDK and, and use that. But an Mbot is not really that powerful. It's Arduino-based, and an Arduino has only two kilobytes of RAM. So taking uh, high resolution pictures, it's not going to work. And we need more like the connectivity and yeah, the camera, con uh, the camera. So what about putting something on top like an ESP8266? Anyone familiar with, with that? A few, okay, that's great. It's a very small uh, device. It's, it's really cheap, a uh, few dollars basically or pounds, sorry. <laughs> and um, it comes with a microcontroller and, and Wi-Fi connectivity. So for IoT purposes, it's, it's a very, very interesting device. But it's still a bit of, uh, well, it's more difficult to get it running on top of the, the Mbot. Uh, it doesn't have that much memory and, uh, and not that much uh, connectivity. And um, so I went for an, an easy solution out got a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi, the, the version 3, it already has a Wi-Fi built in. Uh, it, has a, it comes with a camera interface, you can buy a camera for it. It's way more powerful, more powerful than you'll, you'll ever need on a little r robot like that. And you can extend it uh, with the GPIO headers. So, um, the extension is important um, because the Raspberry Pi itself isn't we aren't there yet. We don't have the sensors. We don't have the battery. So there is a nice uh, board you can put on top of the Raspberry Pi. It's a UPS Pico. It's a power supply. Um, uh, you you connect with you connect connect it to a, a battery. Um, it comes with a 300 or 450 milliampere hour, but uh, that's not that much. I bought a 3000, and the Raspberry Pi can run for hours on that, so that's, uh, that's pretty decent. And you can just plug it on top. Um, for adding sensors to the robot, I got a Grove Pi. It's a, Grove is a, a certain kind of board, uh, both in, in the, for the Raspberry Pi and there's one for Arduinos. Uh, and that, that comes with all, uh, with a, a default uh, a standard connection where you can plug in all kinds of sensors. So you can buy these sensors with the right connection, just plug it in and it, it works, uh, instead of uh, having to hassle with uh, adding resistors and wires. It, it just plug and play. So it's very easy to add sensors uh, when you have this board. And the camera, uh, as I said, the Raspberry Pi, uh, it comes with a, a, a normal a, a camera interface and you can buy and a camera with it, so it's very easy to set up. Um, so it, it, um, I bought also the the Pi Pen. It's in uh, a small uh, camera mount that can look uh, 
in all directions basically panning and tilting and looking around so when the robot drives straight forward you can look uh, a bit to the sides and to the bottom and to the top um, you can buy it with uh, it's a ser two servos and a server controller board and uh, yeah it's uh, it's good to have on the robot so putting it all together the Raspberry Pi's GPIO headers, uh, you can stack these boards on top of each other, like this. So um, it's, it's, it's easy to, uh, to do this way. You couldn't do it in a different order, so <laughs> because it wouldn't fit, but this works. Um, but uh, then we have the Raspberry <coughs> Pi with these things on top, and I have the M-Bot. So the Raspberry Pi, uh, connects to the input through a USB interface and you can communicate uh, via serial commands to the input. Also, the, the Raspberry Pi with the battery uh, gives enough power over USB to power the input as well. So no need for a separate battery pack on the input. Um, so, but it doesn't fit. A uh, Raspberry Pi board has some holes in it, the input has some holes, but they don't fit. There's an easy solution for that, called Lego, <laughs> and uh, the nice thing is the, the people from Mbot also sell these plugs, and um, the Mbot uh, parts are designed in a way that the spacing between the holes in the Mbot and the size of the holes in the Mbot is exactly the same as the Lego Technic parts. So if you get your Lego, I got my son's Lego, and get these uh, blocks, you can build th things on top of your mod. So that's how I did it. And um, this is the Mars spot. So mod with all the things on top. So now we have the hardware for our uh, exploration adventure. Then we need some software. So I'll go through this quickly because I won't be showing all the code. Um, you can get Python libraries for all the elements I showed you. So it's very easy to, to get started. Um, camera, just import a library and capture a picture. For the camera mount, <coughs> import a library and send commands to turn it. The te temper sensor, temperature sensor I've added to the growth board, import the library and you can get the sensor data. Then a little diffi difficult, or more difficult was the uh, controlling the mbot. Uh, it was able you're, you're able to communicate with the mbot over serial commands, but there's not a Python library for that. So I found out what the serial commands were by looking at the output of the uh, Scratch program. So putting in the right commands and seeing what commands are sent to the mbot, I was able to decode and send serial values to the, to the robot. And I found out later that the guys from the mbot have open sourced their software by now, so I didn't need to reverse engineer and find out the codes. I, I could just, just look at their source code. So if you're going that way, Download the source code, it's more easy. <laughs> and so, we have a robot, and we have software to control the robot. But we need more. We need a mission control center. And for that, we use Amazon Web Services. This is probably already outdated, because it changes all the time. And I don't need to tell you about Amazon Web Services. But one of the interesting parts of the Amazon Web Services is Amazon uh, IoT platform. It's a messaging platform for your IoT devices. So uh, AWS IoT uh, gives you the following uh, elements. It makes uh, communication with your IoT devices possible, secure communication, and you can uh, use MQTT for, for messaging. Uh, it also comes with an, a rules engine for routing and transforming the messages and to con for connecting to other Amazon services. And another interesting element is the device shadow. 
device shadow is uh, a little bit of storage uh, somewhere in Amazon where you can keep some state about the machine or uh, so, uh, if the machine itself, if the, the device itself is offline or not connected, you can have this information in the device shadow. It can also work the other way around. You can store information for the device in the device shadow, and the next time the device connects, it can get get the data. So that is a nice picture from Amazon. In the middle, there's the device gateway. It's all the communication uh, goes on. Uh, so you can connect through HTTP, MQTT, and uh, MQTT over WebSockets. And for uh, several devices, they have a uh, device SDK. So you can, uh, you can use it to connect your device. Um, in this case, um, for the Raspberry Pi, I, j I downloaded their uh, their Python uh, API. Um, so, connecting the Mars bot to uh, Amazon IoT is uh, pretty straightforward, I thought. But uh, the uh, SDK from uh, from uh, the, the, from Amazon only made it possible to send data and also wanted to receive data. So, for that, I found. Another library, Eclipse Paho, it's an MQTT library, and with that it's possible to uh, send and receive easily. Um, it's a Python library, of course. And you can import it, uh, I'll skip through this. You can publish and you can subscribe. So, connecting the web client to AWS IoT. Also, Eclipse Paho, but then the JavaScript uh, uh, client, and it uses WebSockets. And my pictures, you could send it over um, uh, MQTT, but it would be uh, um, expensive and uh, it, it would barely fit, basically. So even if you do high resolution, it wouldn't work. Um, so, the pictures uh, are stored in S3. The way it works is the Mbot, uh, the, 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 the Mars bot, uploads a picture to S3 and, and then it makes the picture available through uh, HTTP and then sends the URL to the browser. And then the browser uh, fetches the picture from S3. Okay, let's see if this is going to work with the demo. So here's the little Mars bot. I'll put it here on the table and you might be able to see it. So Here's the mission control center. And I um, need to refresh it. So I have here in the left the controls to move the robot. And it's not doing anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, it's, it's starting now. OK. So I can move forward. And uh oh. <laughs> and it moved backward. Yeah. So let's see. And tilt the camera a bit. Okay. Say cheese. <laughs> so at this moment, the robot takes a picture, sends it to S3, sends its URL to my web client, and then, hopefully, <laughs> it shows the picture. So I had some issues today with the power. Uh, as soon as I take, took a picture, it, it didn't have enough power. I, I didn't have these issues before, but it seems my battery isn't fully loaded at the moment. So I apologize for that. <laughs> no pictures today. <coughs> um, Okay, so 
we've seen the robot in uh, live demo. There's there's more in iOS uh, uh, AWS IoT. Um, the rules engine you can uh, do uh, SQL likes in uh, queries, uh, and that way you can filter out uh, exactly the messages you you like to receive, and then you can connect it to all other uh, uh, several other uh, Amazon uh, services. So I'm not sure how much time is left. Okay, so let's do this quickly. One example is uh, storing the events in a database. Uh, example, uh, connecting it to to Lambda, and you do basically anything, and connecting it to SNS, for example, for sending out an email or an SMS notification, a mobile no notification. Okay, a quick recap: robots are cool. <laughs> Mbot is a great platform. To start with, it's inexpensive, it's easy to, it's easy to learn, and uh, Raspberry Pi uh, has endless possibilities, endless capabilities. Writing Python code is easy, but most of it is already online, so find it there. And Amazon IoT platform enables you to get started with our IoT without running your own servers. And uh, MQTT is an ideal uh, messaging framework for IoT applications. And, of course, the rules engine to connect to other services. Okay. If you want to run off to a store and buy all these parts and build your robot yourself, uh, you should see my blog post. The URL is over there. And um, so there's a, there's a list of uh, parts I bought and... If you live in the Netherlands, the shops where you can buy it. <laughs> but I'm sure it will be available elsewhere. Thank you for your time. Skip.